This is the PixInsight process tutorial for Blink. You find it in Process, Image Inspection, and here it is. Blink is the absolute very first process that your pictures will encounter when they come right out of your camera. Because what it actually does is it gives you a good instrument that you can choose which pictures you want to use and which pictures you want to discard. So how do you do that? You click here on the little yellow folder, Add Image Files. You go to your directory where you have the lights. I have that here. And you throw everything open into Blink. Now what you get is here in the main window, you have all the lists of all the files that are now open. You have a little tiny preview window and you have a big preview window. Blink works in two different ways. The one which is already activated when it starts up is it takes the first picture, it stretches it, and with that stretch level, it stretches all the other pictures. The other possibility is that each picture is stretched individually to the perfect level. So let's see now for what these two modes are useful. Let's start with the ones which you already have. If I click now on play animation and you can see 0.05 seconds, that's as long as one picture will appear. If I start now the animation, I can actually change this to whatever I want. So I can make it much slower. But actually for this purpose here, it's good because what I want to see, obviously I have two filters here, Optolong and Antlia. But within one filter, I want to see if I have a huge change in the brightness, which for example could be that I start when it's still dawn and then it gets night, so it gets darker. And I might see that some pictures might be too bright. But that's actually the only thing that you use this mode. And as you can see here with my pictures, it's all fine. They have all about an even brightness. So I will stop this now and I will go to the other mode, which is much more useful. Okay, and here we go. This, by the way, takes some time, especially now with over 100 pictures I have in here. So we start again with the first picture. You could now again, for example, for better um, review, you could change here to a half a second and then it will go much slower but personally I like to do that manually and you have here these arrows where you can actually click through the pictures and what you're looking at is anything that from a visual point makes you decide to discard this picture so that it's not good enough to go into the stacking process so I'll start now they all look kind of okay And here, for example, I see one where the stars are really elongated. So seems to have been an issue with guiding. So for the moment, what I'm doing is simply I take the selection away. That's not good enough that it's not here anymore, but it's just a reminder for me to actually discard it afterwards. So let's continue. Here we have another one with very elongated stars. I will deselect this one. And we continue with our journey. So I will now do that a little bit faster. Oops, what, what do we have here? Here we have a satellite or something. So definitely we do not want to have this in here. And yep, in the next one it's also still here. So let's assume these are the four pictures that we figured we don't want to have in here. So what are we going to do? We are now with a control click actually selecting them all. So we have here one and I have here one. So I have all four selected. And now down here you see this little icon with the arrow and the little folder. I click on this one. And now you have to define another directory. I already created one. I call it trash. And you say open. And that's all you have to do. They still appear in here, but what actually happened, the file really got moved from your original folder to this trash folder. So this is already the main process. 
Still, I would like to show you a few details. First of all, when you click here, you can actually zoom in and then also change the picture and look at it in detail. That sometimes helps if you have a special star, a special place where you want to put a lot of attention to, for example, to see the star shape. What I would recommend is that when you actually turn the mouse wheel, that you do it in the big window and not in the small one, as this is way too sensitive and it's hard to find the right zoom factor. Now let's look at the icons down here. Beside the open icon is an icon which says close selected eye images, means the ones you have selected, you can close them. For example, the one which you have already moved in the trash folder. The next one is close all images. You should always do that before you exit the process so that it's empty again when you start it for a new batch. You can also go the opposite route and select some of the files and then save them or copy them in principle into another folder. If for example, you want to utilize them for something special. You can also crop the images when you're zoomed in and then I actually just use this part, for example, to make a movie. And then the next one here is for an analysis report. If you click on it, you can actually select a lot of data which is embedded in your picture if you're interested. When you have everything selected that you want, you click OK. OK, this also takes some time and when it's actually finished, you have to expand the window a little bit and now you see that actually you get a lot of additional data. Now I would caution you to go too much here into detail because you can do that if you want to afterwards in the subframe selector, which is a separate process and I will cover that separately. But the one thing that might be interesting is here the mean, where you actually see the mean brightness of the picture. And what we have already looked at before, optically, you can also look at here again in hard numbers if actually the brightness is an average about the same across all your picture. And that's actually the case here. Now, last but not least, I want to talk about this here. Make video. This should actually make a video of this here. So when we let this run, it should make a video of that, which you then can use for whatever. I think that's really interesting when you, for example, follow a comet and then you see it move across the picture. So how does it work? The point is, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so, um, so there were already people before me who tried it, who tried it seriously. By the way, as you see, it actually would need an, a program, which is an .exe file, so it would anyway not work on a Mac. But there's people who tried it, and they confirm it doesn't work at all. Is this an issue? It's not an issue at all, because you can actually do these videos exactly the same way that I actually do at the moment this video that you're watching. You just take a screen recorder which you can actually download for free from the internet and which you do a video of your screen while you're running it and then you crop it and you have done it. Before we close this video, an extra tip. We just discussed now the light frames and that's I think what everybody does, looking at the light frames. But my recommendation to you would be also to do that, even it sounds strange, with the dark, the bias, the flats, the dark flats, whatever. It might just take you a minute to actually browse through them, but you just ensure that not because of your camera made something strange, your computer made something strange, some light enter your telescope or whatever, that you have some bad calibration frames, which actually might create issues through the stacking where you have no clue what really is the issue. So whenever you do some new flat, dark, whatever, just run them through Blink and ensure they really do not have any artifacts which shouldn't be there. And last but not least, what comes now? There's two routes. If you stay within PixInsight, the next thing will be the subframe selector, which we will discuss in another tutorial. But if you have watched already some other material on my channel, you know this is not the route that I would recommend. 
But my recommendation would be once you get out of Blink, you take your picture, you move over to the AstroPixel processor to app and stack it there. And then you come back to PixInsight because it's so much easier, so much more automated, so much more reliable that it's quite worth also looking into the AstroPixel processor. But anyway, I will also cover the subframe selector so that if you want to stay true with PixInsight, you also know what to do. And that comes in the next video. With that, we're at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. See you next time and clear skies.